Greetings, everyone. Fru here. Welcome to the Demo Hub. Welcome to our demo for today. Very excited for today's demo because we're going to be looking at a tool, a utility within the Snowflake family, Streamlit. This utility is relevant not just because it's going to show us some key concepts, the capabilities of Streamlit and Snowflake together for building powerful applications, but the application we're going to see today would help you save cost and help you understand and get more insight into your Snowflake calls, your Snowflake environment. So very fascinating. All of this will be on the GitHub repo. Links to this will be in the description below. You can go ahead and check out the repo or you can just follow this demo to see exactly what this tool is all about and why I am so excited to do this. So that said, let's jump in. We're going to be spending some time in Visual Studio Code and then we're going to be coming back into a Snowflake account to see how this is all coming uh, together. So uh, the very first thing it's going to tell us to do is to, uh, we're going to have to clone this repo, set up some secrets, and that's about it. So really uh, straightforward. So let's go in. We're going to create a new repo. So let's open this up. Command Shift P if you're on Mac, and then you're going to do git CL, and that will be a clone. So let's go ahead and clone. So we're going to clone from git repo. Now you can certainly clone in whatever way makes sense to you by CLI or uh, use any tool to clone. But uh, the end result is that we're going to have to clone this uh, code. So let's come in here, grab this. I need to get that repo, put that, and then we're going to clone that from Git actually. Me. All right. So save that locally and the cloning should happen. So let's open this in a new window. This should be a cloned environment. Everything that was in there is now ready for us to you. So uh, very exciting. Now let's go back. What else do we need? There's a couple of things that we need. Of course, we're going to have to connect to our Snowflake account. So we need to install Python. Yep, that's good. And then we're going to have to set up this configuration. It's nothing too complicated there. Now let's go back. I'm a huge fan of Conda. There are many ways that you can do this, but if you want to use Conda, come in, go to Python. I do have Conda there. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new environment. And call this environment Streamlit app. Maybe I think I already have some other Streamlit there. Keep it as such. What version of Python do we need? We need Python 3.9. So let's go back and that's 3.9. All good. That should take a few seconds to create our Conda environment for us. While that is being created, I'm going to close this. I'm going to go back here and should see this. So let's go in here, open up a new terminal. And we're not going to update this now. I'm going to update that later. So Conda environment was created. And so here, let's go ahead and play this out. We are working in the base environment, but this is not where we want to be. So we're going to have to do Conda activate. And what did we call that? Streamlit app. I believe that's the name of the Conda environment. Again, you can use Conda. You can use uh, pip and whatever it is you use for your environment manager, just uh, be consistent with that so now we are within that particular environment so all fine and good if you're gonna take this app and install and use for your organization hopefully this would be a relevant demo for you now next piece here is we're just gonna have to create a file secrets file and this will have the credentials to authenticate into our snowflake account there is a folder already that has a config the terminal and i'm just gonna go ahead and create a new one that would be secrets .tomo. now this file is a very straightforward file. I recommend you do not, you do not put your secrets so everyone else can see. All right. So we're going to have to put it in a format that looks like this. You're going to essentially copy this. This would be Snowflake. That's the name of the app. And then this would be the user, the account, the password, and the warehouse. Of course, I'm not going to put it in here. So let's pause this and I'll put in the credentials and then we're going to come back on the backside. All right, so everything was saved in our secrets file. Again, secrets are meant to be secret, so you don't want to keep that open. Actually, I think this is a problem. Let's uh, take this up. I want that in that directory, and we can go ahead and delete this. Ask me again, move that to trash. So we have a config the tomal, and within this dot streamlit, we do have uh, the secrets dot tomal. Let me just verify. We have six streamlit secrets dot tomal. That's the level at which we want that. So everything should be fine and good. We have our credentials ready to go. So now 
We do have the home.py. Let's open that up. Close that. Then home.py. This is all the goodness. We've done a lot of demos on Streamlit, how to get that set up. It's a very fascinating tool to build applications for your organization. It's going to do an import, set up a page, title, user statistics, and all of that. And this is meant to be run locally. So we're not going to deploy this to any server. So let's come back in, go back, my terminal. And now with a Conda virtual environment created and activated, so Streamlit app, let's go ahead and run the code. So in here, we have the home.py. But before we run this, typically we're going to do something like Streamlit run and we're going to give the name of the file home.py. But of course, we know we haven't specifically installed Streamlit in this Conda environment. So we're going to have to install that and not just Streamlit, any other dependencies that are needed for this to run. The beauty about this is there is a pip file here that has all those dependencies for us. So let's go ahead and take a look at that file. So the resource for where the files should be installed from PyPy, Python 3.9, and Streamlit is going to get installed, request, Millify, Plus, Snowflake, Python Connector 2.7, SQL Pass, and a few other dependencies. You, you can certainly install this manually by yourself, but uh, pip is going to help us install that. So let's go back here. How can we take care of that? We're going to copy this code. By running this, it's going to do a pif env clean, then it's going to install everything with Python 3.9. I already have Python 3.9. Let's go ahead and run that piece. So pif env clean and everything should be good. It's found the dependency files we want. We might take a few seconds here to go through and install everything from that file. So legit a few seconds. The run did complete. So let's clear this. It's all done. We're now ready to run the application. So copy this. So this is what will launch the application for us. Paste this with any lock. The Streamlit app should run and give us a local host URL that we can follow. Go back to the browser. If we bring this over to this side of the screen, <clears throat> we can see the compute. And this is going to query Snowflake and get us a compute. Very beautiful, very beautiful. See the storage. Let's get the data transfer running. This account is not heavily used. It's just an account for simple demos. So I don't have a lot going on. You wouldn't see a lot of warehouses or a lot of usage. But if you think about an organization with tons of warehouses, this will be extremely useful. Not just as the only thing you look at. Let's look at the service type. Choose your service type. Do all compute spend by day. And it's trending, it's trending down. That's good. That's good. I want that. Two credits were used, not a lot. Let's see how much we have. Save that, of course. My two warehouses, <laughs> well, the main warehouse we use for the demos. Cloud services, too, not a lot. Cloud services would be something like uh, materialized views, uh, clustering, and maybe query acceleration service. A lot of things will be showing up in here. You can get those insights. What do we have here? My warehouse. You can see start time, end time, and just how busy the warehouse was with the histogram. What are we missing here? Duplicate widget. Just a UI thing here. Okay, let's go to storage and see. No consumption. No consumption. All right, that doesn't surprise me. I Again, this is just a demo account. And I guess there is really, well, there's one table here for aggreg aggregate history, but it's a tiny table for a demo we did. Not a lot. Data transfer, probably not a lot too as well, right? across regions and so but depending on let's go all time do we see anything nope do we see anything for storage nope all right so depending on how much you use and the kind of insights you could be looking for this could be a starting point right and you can certainly customize and build the whole beauty of of streamlit is just this rapid prototyping you have an idea you have some data instead of waiting to spin up servers and do React and, and Node and Angular and all of that stuff, you can just quickly iterate through that and build something, prototype and deploy and have someone taking a look at it. So if we come back here to utilities, that's not what we want. When uh, pages, let's go to computing sites. You can see all the queries that are being executed against Snowflake are right here. So all the values else. So this is, this is what is powering that dashboard. So 
just taking a quick eyeball of this. Let's take a quick eyeball. It's kind of important sometimes to see. Let's go back. What else do we have apart from the pages? Utilities, charts, processing the PUI. So some really good information. SQL the PUI. All right, this is what I was looking for. These are the queries that are going back to Snowflake. Now, if you don't want to uh, visualize this here, you want to do it in, say, Snow site, you could as well take these queries. These are all coming from query history. With a little bit of customization, make them run on on Snowside and build those dashboards directly in Snowside. So well. the beauty about Snowflake is all this data is available at your fingertips. Again, not just the data, it also has the metadata. Very fascinating tool. Hopefully this demo is helpful to you. A nice utility to have in your data journey within the modern data space. Streamly Snowflake usage applications. Links to all of this will be in the description below. If you want to check them out, set it up if it's useful to you do let us know. The team is calling out for uh, contributors. So if you take this, customize it, make it better, you can always contribute back and help the community grow and take advantage of applications like this. The reason why I really like this and including this as part of the demo hub is if you want to just get familiar with Streamlit, you can get familiar with this. You can help yourself with Snowflake and optimize your cost. You can get comfortable with Python, SQL. It's the whole nine yards, right? This space of application development especially for scratching your own itch is something that's very fascinating to me. So a fascinating tool to demo. Again, links to all of this will be in the description below. Thanks for watching. Do share this with somebody that might get value out of it. As always, through here, signing out. I'll see you in our next demo.